Hi, and welcome to our CSA Digital Summit. Um, we hope we can bring you a little bit of our CSA Email Summit feeling to your home. The session for today is the future of email is dynamic. Just one minute, note. My name is Maike and I'm responsible for the marketing. My colleague is Sebastian, who is the technical lead in our team, and we both are working for the Certified Senders Alliance. Maybe you are wondering now who is the Certified Senders Alliance and what we do all day. We, we want to increase the quality of commercial emails and to achieve this goal, we create enable quality standards that we do not alone. We do it in cooperation with our partners we have now more than 100 certified senders, more than 15, uh, 50, sorry, mailbox providers and technology partners. And we are, I think, now at the market over 15 years now. We have the email summit since, I think, six years now. And um, they are all different international experts meet, share their knowledge, and of course, discuss about the future in the email marketing. We have some housekeeping rules for today. No worries, they're very simple and easy to understand. You are muted during the world webinar, so you can concentrate on the presentation of Ruth and John. If you have any questions, you can submit them during the world webinar. Just use the um, control panel. It might be on the white, on the white side on your desktop. We um, order questions and we'll read them out loud at the end. For today, we have two speakers. First of all, it's John. He's from Google, the lead, lead product manager at Google on the Gmail team, and with who's the CEO and founder of Skippify. The question for today is, what does the email look like in the future? So I would like to hand over to John, who starts the presentation, and I wish you a lot of fun and, of course, a lot of new knowledge for your future and in your business. Thanks a bunch, Micah. Um... My name is John Armour. As you mentioned, I'm a product manager on the uh, for AMP for Email on the Gmail team. Um, today, we're going to talk about AMP for Email, what it is, what you can do with it, and how you get started. But first, let me introduce uh, Rith. Morning, everybody. I'm Rith Martin. I'm the CEO and founder of Skipify. And for those of you who haven't had a chance to meet yet, spent a number of years over on the team at Responsys building out some really neat email and cross-channel campaigns. And that was really the start of, of the, the need for Skipify and the technology that we're building. Um, email continues to be the highest ROI channel. And regardless of that, there's still a lot of friction that exists inside of, of email programs and purchasing through email. John, maybe if you want to pop up that, that intro video. Um, yeah. And if you can't, that's okay. But um, what we want to do here is yeah, this is perfect, is share what, what we're creating, which is this experience called Frictionless Commerce. And what this is showing here is an existing email template. And what happens is Skipify takes this email and makes it instantly shoppable. So we have permission to shopper PII, we have product information and real-time inventory, a full featured checkout, and I, uh, dynamically and automatically, we're able to take these emails and make them shoppable. And so that user experience is that the person can interact with the email inside of the inbox and just press a button to buy that product. So most merchants are still seeing 70 plus percent abandon rates in the friction of purchasing through email. Skipify allows that to go down to zero and, and conduct commerce right inside of the inbox in part with, with some help from our friends at, at Google and John. So maybe I'll, I'll pass it back to John for some more um, context about the talk today. Great, one second while I fix this. <laughs> no worries. There we go. Um, thanks for bearing with the technical challenges, everybody. Um, so yeah, uh, I'd like to start off uh, my bit here by talking a little bit about email. Um, obviously we use email for a ton of different things every day. We do things like we make plans with friends, we get updates from social networks, um, sometimes we'll provide feedback on products or things that we've bought. Um, and then obviously there's that new addition that we'll talk about later with Skipify, which is shopping right from inside an email. In fact, email is so popular that 2.6 billion users use Gmail every single month. 
And last year, over 293 billion emails were sent every single day, which are just mind boggling numbers to me still. Um, so it's, it's really hard to overestimate how critical email is to everybody. So like it keeps you connected to the people and the things that are important in your lives. Um, and it's been around for quite a long time. And over that time period, the web itself has evolved pretty significantly. We've gone from static articles and content to these really robust, dynamic, interactive apps that support really complicated interactions. As an example, in the early 2000s, no one thought you'd be able to run a full spreadsheet or a presentation application in your browser. That's exactly what we do today with Google Sheets, and it's what I'm doing in this presentation with Google Slides right now. But over that same time, email has stayed pretty much the same. Sure, there's been lots of innovations in how we manage and process email, but what you can send in the actual content hasn't changed that all that much. You can include um, text, images, and links, and not a lot more. Um, and the content of that email is still static. It gets out of date, and so users are frequently looking at stale information. Um, and emails are not like clickable and interactive in the way that users have come to expect from most of the rest of the modern web. So it's super weird, right? Email plays a central role in the lives of billions of people, and it's been around for decades. And during that time, the web has evolved pretty significantly. But email messages have basically been left behind. The messages you can send still just contain text, links, and images. It just hasn't really kept up with the kinds of changes that we've seen elsewhere on the internet. Which is why uh, we worked with uh, a number of other email clients to create this AMP for email standard. AMP for email allows email senders to include all of the richness and interactivity of the AMP web standard inside of their email messages, which really is uh, sort of trying to create this email of the future. And to be clear, AMP doesn't replace your existing emails. It's actually compatible with them. It's just a third MIME type to include inside the email body alongside your current text and HTML parts. Um, and it works in a number of popular email clients already and supports a, supports a bunch of really cool new use cases. Um, first, in AMP, you can make your emails more interactive with clickable interfaces right inside the message so that users can browse and explore the content without ever having to leave their client. Second, AMP emails can be kept up to date so that users don't see stale information when they open up your uh, message. And third, users can actually take action right from inside the email, like things like responding to a survey, doing the first couple steps of a workflow, or, or now, obviously, you can actually shop from inside the email itself. But let me let Riff tell you more about that exciting evolution of the shopping experience. Cool. Thanks so much, Sean. So I, I think part of John's conversation there that is really important for everybody um, is this idea of taking those workflows that exist outside of email that, that used to exist inside of websites and apps and actually extending them into email for the first time. One of the questions that we ask our customers and we ask ourselves frequently is, how long does it take a shopper to buy from your emails today? And the answer there uh, across the industry and, and, and across our customers is 97 seconds. And so what's happening there is after a person clicks through on the email, they then have to go and select their product options. They have to add those items into a bag. They have to go into a cart. There's a checkout protocol. The average person is not logged in to the merchant's website where they're conducting that purchase. And they're also not using express checkout or autofill features. What Skipify is doing through frictionless commerce and through shoppable emails is condensing this experience down to make it immediate and instant. And for the first time, we're allowing shopping inside of Gmail and instant purchasing inside of the inbox. And so, John, maybe if you wanna share that shoppable email video and I can walk everyone through that. What's really exciting about this technology is that what it's doing is using AMP to take real-time product information and make it available inside of the inbox so that if an individual has, oh, this is perfect, you can play this, this is great. So, so this is a shoppable email and you'll see that hotspot that pops up and we can click view products. And what's happening for the first time is all of that product information is now dynamically accessible inside of the email. So this shoe has 10 different colorways and 20 different sizes. That's over 200 combinations of products available in the email. You'll see there, we just hit add to cart. That's not adding it to a cart on a website. It's adding to a cart that lives inside of Gmail that's powered by Skipify. We're gonna go down to another product here. And again, all of this information is dynamic and real time 
based on Skipify tech. And it allows that user for the first time to create a shopping experience inside of Gmail. You'll see now that our cart went to three items because we had a quantity of two there. And watch what happens when we check out here. We're still inside of Gmail and we can just click a button to buy those products. All done. So if we want to go back into those slides, John, um, what we're doing with frictionless commerce and with shoppable emails is we're taking all of that challenge and frustration and friction, that 70 plus percent abandon rate, and we're eliminating it. If you want to go down into that um, next slide, part of the experience here is a great user interface that you'll see is very similar, like John said, to some of the modern experiences that you see across the web. If you've seen Instagram shopping, it's a beautiful experience. It's fantastic um, for shoppers. It takes all of the creative and the brand that, that that merchant had, and it just simply overlays product information and a frictionless checkout inside of Instagram. What Skipify is able to do with help from Gmail and the Yahoo team, powered by AMP, is create an Instagram shopping type experience that's now accessible inside of Gmail. And that allows for, again, for real-time product information, for a full featured cart, and for the ability to check out right inside of that message. And that's for us, that's what frictionless commerce and what Skipify is all about, is taking those experiences and making them easy and simple for shoppers to buy. And it's not just enough to have a great UI, um, we also wanna have great results. So um, right now, we're already seeing that shoppable emails and frictionless commerce drive revenue growth. We're seeing a 37% increase in revenue from email for merchants that are participating in shoppable emails and the shoppable email program, which is fantastic. Email is, has long been the highest ROI channel and for us to drive that much revenue increase, particularly now and in, in, you know, with, with COVID and everything that the world is facing, we're very, very proud of those results. One area that we weren't expecting that we're also really excited about is a decrease in unsubscribes for merchants that are using shoppable emails. People who receive shoppable emails just appreciate the content. They love the user experience and the interactivity. It feels like a more valuable, more meaningful message and people are just less likely to unsubscribe through a shoppable email. What's also really, really important for the merchants and the partners on the call to understand about shoppable emails and working with Skipify is that we built it in a way that it's also frictionless for merchants to use. It requires zero coding from the email teams of merchants to start sending shoppable emails. So if, if, if you've kept your finger on the pulse of AMP over the last couple of years, you know there was a great article from Chad White, who's amazing at Oracle, who I, I know a lot of you know, and, and he talked about the challenges of sending AMP email. You have to build a, a microsite for every potential permutation of product options inside of each version of each email that you send. And all that has to be done using AMP, which is a, a protocol that most merchants, most email marketers in, in particular are not as familiar with. And Chad's right about all those things. And it's, and it's difficult, it has been difficult. What Skipify is doing is we're eliminating all of that burden for merchants. So we have the world's first HTML to AMP translation engine. It allows us to very efficiently and effectively process and, and transfer standard emails into shoppable emails for the first time. And we do that all without any effort or um, additional coding on the side of the merchant. So, um, you know, what's also really exciting about this is on Friday, we just announced this program. We gave our first uh, press release, a really small press release that Skipify had been teaming up with the Gmail team. and and John and um, and and releasing shoppable emails over the weekend. We've gotten over a hundred articles and press releases written about shoppable emails and and the team up between Gmail and Skipify. What's what's that was fantastic. But what was really neat about it is the bulk of the coverage is actually from mainstream business media. It's from the Wall Street Journal. It's from Business Insider. It's from Yahoo Finance. Um, it's, it's, we were getting some great coverage from email specific publications, but to John's point, everybody uses email. Everyone uses email every day. And it's an exciting opportunity to help reinvent that and to create some UI and some interactivity inside of the email inbox that makes email as easy to use as Instagram shopping. For us, that's super, super exciting. So, um, 
you know, I think if uh, maybe John, if you want to hit the next one. Um, <clears throat> great. So part of our value here at Skipify is to be frictionless for our merchants and also for our users to start using Skipify shoppable emails. In most cases, you don't have to change your email or your marketing stack at all. We work with great email providers already. There's a great chance that the email provider that you're using today as a, as a merchant is already capable of sending AMP emails, in which case it's very easy for us to start working with that email provider as well. If your email provider doesn't send AMP emails, that's totally fine. We have some workarounds there too um, that make it easy for us to, to work with you. And then on this next one, um, this is how you can get started with shoppable emails. So John will walk you through in a couple minutes how if you wanna manage the process internally of getting approved for dynamic emails, through Gmail, you can do that directly. The easiest thing to do is just work with Skipify. We have a direct connection with the team at Gmail and also with Yahoo Mail, and we will, as, as a, just a, a friendly service, we will get you approved and maintain that approval to send dynamic messages across Gmail and Yahoo. We do that all for our merchant customers, um, and it makes their lives a heck of a lot easier. After the approval, what we can do is through our web UI at skipify.com slash email or through API connections, we will just make all your templates that you'd like shoppable. And again, we do that without any additional coding on the side of the merchant. It's a great way to increase revenue from email by 30 plus percent. Um, once you have that connection with Skipify, then all you have to do is, is think ahead of, term, ahead of time in terms of what campaigns you have going out. Um, if those are new product releases or promotional campaigns, all you have to do is alert it to the Skipify team and we'll make that email shoppable, easy peasy. Um, so I think, um, I think the other question is also like, who is, who is Skipify? We've never heard of you, um, which is a great and real question to ask. We've been in stealth mode for the last two years, doing some great work with merchants and, and also some, some awesome digital and, and email providers working closely with the team at Cheetah Digital and also with John and, and the team at, at Gmail and, um, maybe, John, if you want to share that other video that, that shares how Skipify's tech works. We're an, an AI-powered payments company, and our goal is to create frictionless commerce across channels, starting with email. Here's Skipify on a merchant website, and the technology works the same between email and text and web. When someone clicks on our purchase button, what's happening behind the scenes is we have permission to that shopper's PII, we have secure payment, just like PCI level one compliance for PayPal and, and Stripe. And then we have an AI that goes in and actually completes that order on behalf of the running user. And so the way that that AI ordering system works, which is, is, is part of what separates Skipify, is it allows us to complete orders on a merchant's website using a secure session so that that merchant doesn't have to make any change that, the changes at all to their payment stack or their marketing stack. And so what that means is if you're a merchant, orders from Skipify get completed using all of your existing website infrastructure. So you don't need to change your order confirmation emails, you don't need to have to change your, you know, your your e-commerce infrastructure to process our transactions. All of the returns happen the exact same way they would have happened if someone had bought directly on your website because they do. With Skipify, all of that gets ported into your existing e-commerce website infrastructure. If you'd like, we can complete that transaction through API as well. We don't have to, it's just in the spirit of being frictionless, it's the easiest, fastest way to, to get, um, and also the safest, in a lot of ways, um, method of, of completing transactions across channels. What that also does is it gives us the opportunity to very easily extend payments into these other channels. Again, starting with email, we got some exciting announcements for text and display advertising. Um, and also affiliate programs coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we're really excited. We think the opportunity for frictionless commerce is huge to take all of the friction in that conversion funnel, the 70 plus percent abandoned rates that, that shoppers have and drive that down to zero. Um, and, and if you look in mobile, abandoned rates across mobile and, and oftentimes are, are above 90%, um, which is just, um, you know, that needs to change. So we're really excited um, to be releasing the shoppable email program. I want to say a big thanks to John and the team at, at Gmail. You've just been like big hugs up in Canada all the way from the Bay Area to Canada. But, you know, we really enjoy working with you. It's been amazing and awesome results so far. And 
We're really excited to bring shoppable emails and, and frictionless commerce out to the world. So thank you so much, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you can get started with us. <laughs> Come work with us. Um, so, uh, you know, you can join by, by visiting Skipify at skipify.com slash email. You can sign up there. We do have a couple spots left in our next um, beta release. So if you hurry, you can, you can reserve your spot there. Join at skipify.com slash email. And if we can't get you into this tranche, don't worry, we'll get you into the next one. Uh, if that's too much work and you want to be more frictionless, just send an email to sales at skipify.com. Pull up your phone right now and send an email. You can have one line in there and, and we'll follow up with you. And uh, whether you're a, a potential merchant or a, or, or a partner, we would love to start the conversation and, and help the world become um, more, more frictionless if we can. So that's it for me. Thank you, John. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, Riff. Um, it's you. really exciting to see all of this stuff come together. I'm, I, it's amazing to watch. Cool. Um, so great job to you and the whole team there. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously not all senders are e-commerce senders. Um, and AMP, AMP for email is good for lots of other interesting use cases. Uh, and so let me just really quickly walk through some of those just to get your creative juices flowing. And, and hopefully you'll think of um, things e-commerce and beyond to, uh, to do with AMP for email. So one of them we've seen uh, Pinterest, a social network for ideas, allows users to send, get to receive uh, email notifications about uh, ideas they might be interested in. Um, prior to AMP for email, these messages were sort of static and unactionable. If a user saw something they'd like, they'd click, open up a new tab, and then log into Pinterest and do all that to save to their boards. And now with AMP for email, you just click, um, just like everywhere else on the web, uh, and you can save ideas that you're interested in. Um, another partner, uh, Lending Trees, experimenting with in email loan recommendation surveys powered by AMP, um, which you can see answer a few simple questions. This can apply to any survey type use case. Um, Oyo is a travel booking site based in India that sends users travel recommendations for places uh, they might look to buy, book accommodations back when travel was a thing we did a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and with their awesome. new, it's, I know it's too soon still. Um, <laughs> But with uh, AMP emails powered by uh, from from Oyo, you can easily browse these options, see larger photos about accommodations, view details about whether you want to, you know, get free breakfast or Wi-Fi, all inside of that message. Hopefully, we're all traveling again soon. Um, not only were those messages super powerful and, and cool, they also uh, saw massive improvements in their click-through rates and their conversion rates. Um, sending that, uh, obviously, those are pre-pandemic numbers. Um, and then Find Domestic is an Italian consumer credit company. They worked with MagNews to create this cool dynamic loan calculator. Uh, so what happens here is the user chooses a project um, by clicking on one of those little icons or hovering over there. Uh, they edit the amount that they want to receive, um, as well as that little drop-down menu about a type. Aridimento means uh, furniture, I'm told. Um, and then the algorithm in, that's baked inside of the email produces the amount due and the interest rates all instantaneously, all without having to be redirected to an external page. So there's zero latency, and it's uh, it's like a super ex uh, good user experience. In fact, it was so good that they got over 133% higher increase in their click rate, so more than double cl the click rate using AMP. But what we've really started seeing uh, a lot of traction on and interest in is what I've been calling these productivity use cases. So helping users take one to three steps in a workflow inside of email or just get something done in like analogous to what Rith showed you earlier with shopping, right? You, the cart and add to cart and checkout process is basically just a workflow. Um, and so one of the most popular that we've ha we have is obviously these Google Docs comments emails. So Google Docs sends an, a users an email notification whenever somebody mentions them in a comment on a document. Um, the problem with those emails is that they are quickly out of date because new replies come in and then you'd have to open up a new tab to see the latest status to reply to it or resolve the comment, whatever. Um, and with these new AMP emails from Google Docs, whenever somebody mentions you in a comment, you get an up-to-date comment chain in Gmail where you can easily reply or resolve the comment uh, right from the message. It saves you a bunch of time because it eliminates the need to open up that tab and, and it also allows you to uh, take action without going anywhere else. Uh, hopefully many of you are Google Workspace customers and have already seen this. Um, we just last week launched another one like this. Uh, when somebody requests access to a file in Drive, uh, you receive an email with that access request. Previously, obviously, you click that, it took you to the tab, you'd have to give them access in that new tab. 
but now you can do that all inside the message. You can uh, review the request, who it's from, choose whatever the right access level is, and grant that access directly from inside the email. But it's not just Google sending these. Um, we work with some other partners. Um, Guru is a collaborative knowledge solution that helps their customers create and share knowledge whenever and wherever they need it. Um, they launched AMP for email experience that allows their users to expand and read what they call their knowledge cards uh, within this email thread. So they can also do things like completing actions like uh, card verification, making sure that, that content is still relevant, um, and reply to comments in the thread. And so now these emails are much more stateful and relevant to their users. You can see this, this graphic here is a, sort of the before and after, before on the left and then the after with AMP. It's a much more uh, visual and seamless experience for users. Um, and this, they've had some really exciting results. They've, uh, they're hearing just anecdotally from customers that this has streamlined, streamlined their management of the Guru tool, um, as well as helping to improve the quality and use of their knowledge base. And more specifically, quantitatively, they see a two and a half X increase in the number of uh, card comment actions and 75% increase in ca uh, card verification accent actions um, compared to the HTML version email notifications. And based on that result, they're actually gonna extend AMP to a whole bunch of new notification emails, which is exciting for us. Um, AMP has been a really important asset, has become a really important asset in their tool belt for ensuring that uh, their customers get knowledge where they need to. Um, one other example is Copper. They're a CRM uh, and project management solution designed specifically for Google Workspace users, the artist formerly known as G Suite. Um, instead of receiving static email notifications each time you're tagged, they leveraged AMP uh, to give users a single dynamic email where they can see relevant information for the opportunity. Uh, they can then respond to comments from their teammates, uh, bring the users, their users the most seamless experience possible. And they can also share their reaction inside of emails because, I mean, hey, who doesn't like emojis? Um, but the guiding principle there was simple. When everything that they need is right in the inbox, they can collaborate more nimbly and be more productive. Since they launched this experience at the end of May, Copper users collectively send on average 10,000 AMP powered emails each week. Um, and they've seen a massive uptake in these comment reactions, the emoji features, and comments themselves are up 50% since they launched uh, as well. So that's all pretty exciting, cool stuff. Um, and we knew that when we created AMP that for it to actually become the future of email, uh, we had to make sure that we were engaging the entire email ecosystem to ensure that AMP can be delivered and tested using the tools that people are already using. There are a bunch of parts to this puzzle. Uh, many senders use email delivery services, most, almost all do, um, and they use maybe a service for testing emails um, to make sure that they render properly across devices and clients, and of course, it has to be viewable in email clients to be valuable in the first place. So just on the delivery side, this is a subset with an animation of uh, some of the people we've partnered with. Um, from Adobe to Salesforce and SendGrid, and there's tons more on the way. And then you've already heard from Rith about Skipify. Uh, there's also Stripo, uh, Stripo and Express Pigeon, which have great email, uh, visual email builders, um, sort of the you know drag and drop kind of do it yourself thing. Um, Litmus and NodeMailer are popular testing platforms that allow you to test AMP emails. And we've also engaged with the other uh, email providers. So AMP is supported today in Gmail and Yahoo and Mail.ru, and it's coming soon to AOL, AOL Mail. So with AMP for email, you can do all kinds of crazy ex engaging experiences in emails, up to and including shopping, uh, which shifts these messages from being these static flat things to dynamic interactive mini applications. Your emails can fetch up-to-date information and allow users to take action from right inside the message. And of course, it's compatible with many of the tools you already use for delivery and testing, as well as a number of popular email clients. So what to do now? Um, I would recommend that you find out if your ESP supports AMP for email, as you've seen, many do, but there are plenty of others who have told us they just want their customers to tell them that it's something that is necessary uh, in order to prioritize that kind of work. Um, so just letting them know that you're interested helps the ecosystem and it will get you closer to the front of the line for sending AMP emails. And then you can start creating and testing AMP emails, uh, register um, uh, with, with the AMP registration form, which I'll talk about in a second, and that way uh, you can start sending AMP. So one of the most common questions we get, uh, what is this registration process you speak of? Um, you have to uh, meet a bunch of guidelines, which we'll uh, explain in the next slide. 
um, send a production ready email that's AMP powered with a successful HTML fallback and fill out the registration form. And what we're doing is we're, we're uh, registering and allow listing these emails on a per sending address basis. So, you know, sales at skipify.com, for example. Um, and we just want you to be sort of good email senders, good stewards of the email ecosystem. We want to make sure that you're not uh, spammers and all that kind of stuff. We want to make sure the messages work. Um, it's still relatively, you know, somewhat early in the AMP life cycle. And so it makes a ton of sense uh, for us to sort of ensure the quality of what's going out. Um, you have to have SPF, DCAM, and DMARC uh, set up properly so that everything authenticates. Um, follow the course headers rules, things like that. Uh, it's all documented on amp.dev slash email, I think it is. I have a link later. Um, or if that all sounds really hard, you can just use Skipify to get started. <laughs> Seems like a lot fewer steps in this one. Easy peasy. All right. Yep. yep. Um, so if you want to learn more, uh, the links on the left are the links for uh, the AMP site as well as an individual email client site. And obviously, Skipify's uh, address on the right, skipify.com slash email, um, helps you learn more about what you want to get done here. Um, we're really excited for the Shopable experience and for all of the creative things we know you're going to do out there. Um, and with that, I think that concludes our day. Awesome. Really good, John. Thank you. I had Thank one you, more real world experience to share for interactive emails. Just before the session started, the go to meeting stopped letting me present. So, in the minute before this started, John requested access to all my content. And through Gmail, I was able to give him dynamic access to everything. I don't know if you could tell during the presentation, but John did an awesome job. Uh, running everything from his side. That was all facilitated through AMP-based emails to get <laughs> permission <laughs> right as the right as the session started. Thank yeah, we launched know. that one just in time. <laughs> that was perfect timing. Yes. Yeah, guys, but I'm afraid we're not done yet. There have been a few questions, uh, as you can imagine, and um, I'm happy to read them out um, from the different panelists that just raised them. First one is Elena. She raised a question. She was customer of responses back in the early twenty, uh, early two thousands. Sorry, uh, and she's asking the term dynamic was used widely back then. Would you agree that dynamic is in fact the email's past and present and its future? Is it actual interactive? That is her question. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Yeah. Great Go question. Ahead, oh no. Well. I think, you know, in the past, there were some platforms like Responses and others that used terms like dynamic. And I think, you know, the real euphemism there, that was, that was probably the wrong usage of the word dynamic. I think the right term back then should have been personalization. And what was really happening was the use of web, web behavior and, and other data to say, hey, this is a, a message that's individualized for that person. And sort that of dyna was dynamic at send time, sort of. Sort of. And 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 based on that person's you know browse behavior on the website or products that they might like, that person is getting a one-to-one -one communication. And it happens through email. Yeah. What What's different about that is that message that arrives in the inbox is it, until now and previously was static. It's a fixed image. You have to click through onto a website. You have to go and add all those products into carts. The interactivity inside of the email inbox, that's what's new, that's what's novel. And yeah, so I think and using me, that word interactive is probably pretty, yeah. pretty accurate. Yeah. Yep. Great question. Cool. I hope, yeah. I hope that answers the question. There's a next one. Um, I think what people like the most is you mentioned zero coding for email teams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the follow up question. The follow up oh, question man. is. Is this targeted really? to senders? Yeah. I'm is sorry, that targeted to, to, to senders like Mailgun, or is that meant for e-commerce companies? Yeah, really great question. So at Skipify, we partner both with merchants directly. So if you're a merchant, you want to start using shoppable emails, go ahead and work with us, and we will make it zero coding for you as a merchant for your email team. For example, you have an HTML template that you built to send an email. Just send it over to us and we'll return it back to you in a way that's shoppable. A, a layer above that is that we also work with 
with email platforms like a Cheetah Digital, for example, or some of these other platforms to help create some API integrations and even some UI inside of those platforms to help make shoppable emails and AMP-based emails more effective. And so we have a, a growing list of partners on the email provider side and on the, on the campaign execution side that are now deploying Skipify tech inside of their platform to make shoppable emails. We're gonna keep growing those partnerships. Um, and so the goal really is for the merchant, we're gonna keep moving upstream to, to make it easier and easier for them to do this. They shouldn't have to build and code these themselves. They should just use their existing process. They have a process for building their templates and building their creative. They shouldn't have to change anything. Just work with their existing process and then send it over to Skipify and we'll work with you to make it interactive, I won't say dynamic, interactive and, and shoppable without any coding from, from your email team. Thanks, Ruth, for answering. Uh, yep. There is a question. Um, I'm not sure about for whom it is. What are the conditions to be approved? My guess would be to be approved to use AMP uh, with an email. Can you uh, comment this a little? Maybe, John? I don't know. Yeah, um, so the registration guidelines the, to get approved, you have to have a working AMP email with a working HTML fallback. Um, you have to, as I mentioned, you have to have the SPF DKIM DMARC set up properly. Um, you know, you have to have a decent sending reputation or else you're going to be marked as spam because you have a reputation as a spammer or whatever. So uh, most of the rest of the, the, the email, the AMP specific things are generally around the DMARC, DKIM, SPF records and the working AMP part in the HTML fallback. Um, and then you just have to get approved by sending the registration request. Uh, our team reviews um, as well as the mail.ru and Yahoo teams review the emails themselves and you either get approved or not. Uh, there's no guarantee that if you get approved for one, you get approved for all, but we do try to keep the standards pretty similar amongst the three clients. Thank you very much for that. Another question regarding M for email. Uh, it is not enabled in Gmail unless we allow pictures to be displayed by default. Is there That's a true. good is there a good reason for that? <laughs> <laughs> Privacy wise, users might want uh, to not display pictures for most emails, but enjoy AMP for specific ones. Uh, yeah, that's, um, it is known that that is a gap. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking into ways to make that better, but yeah, the, the general concept was, uh, if you don't want an image to be displayed, you probably also don't want an AMP image to be displayed and, you know, trying to back port an AMP experience into a non image experience would be kind of weird. Uh, it would just be super broken, and so that we didn't. There was no way to make that a clean uh, transition. I think the the, the remaining gap we probably still need to sort out is the uh, click display images to show this particular one message uh, won't then display the AMP message. So we can you know we can take that in as a feature request and make that work at some point. Cool, thanks. Um, I think this is the question regard uh, for with regards for for Riz. Uh, the integration, are you doing this um, with or without JavaScript being placed in the email templates? Um, we can take that offline. <laughs> I'd say all of us directly. Just, we have some mandates to not talk about. Um, we have some additional patents we're filing right now. So we just want to make sure we don't talk publicly too much about how all the operations work. There is the happy. secret sauce. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you send me an email, I'll follow up with you. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, simple question often asked, is that what you're offering GDPR compliant? I yes. mean, for us, yeah, for us, it's, it's obviously, uh, it is. Um, and it's just whether the RIF and that infrastructure is, so. Yes, absolutely. And CCPA, we take that all very seriously. I think, you know, a lot of a lot of where businesses get into trouble there is when they're using PII and customer data in ways that that person didn't expect and wasn't anticipating, where that person feels like they're being taken advantage of. Like that's really the spirit of a lot of um, 
you know, the regulatory issues there. And so, yeah, at Skipify, it's very clear. Like we're, we're helping consumers connect with brands more efficiently and creating these experiences for people that they can opt into and participate in. And we're very clear about what that experience looks like and, and how we use their data. And, and we give people the, the option of, you know, opting out of it if they don't want to participate in it or, or frankly, just not joining from the start. So and then and then, you know, we make sure that we're always transparent with with users and merchants about how that data exchange works and, and what we do with that person's data. That's all very clear on our side. Right. Thank you very much for that. Um, a question from Ali regarding the Google Docs and email um, comment section that you were presenting, John. Is mm -hmm. that real time? Uh, it is. It is basically real time. So what happens is at open, we'll fetch the latest status. And then when you enter your comment and hit reply, you'll see that latest status uh, reflected in the message. Um, if you keep that email tab open for, you know, an hour or whatever, it, will, it would, would get out of sync, yes. It is not keeping a live uh, connection. It fetches its status, state on open and, and when you uh, perform actions in, in email. Right, thanks. Karen is having uh, a question about the different versions of an email. Uh, would a company need to create two types of email, one for AMP and one not? The fallback you mentioned, how does it look like? Yeah, great question. I should have gotten into more detail about that. So you create one single email that has all three of the parts. Any email clients that uh, support AMP will display the AMP part. Any email clients that do not will display the HTML part. Um, there's only one caveat. Uh, there's certain email clients will automatically display the last part uh, accidentally. And so you just need to have uh, the HTML part be the last part instead of the AMP part. But it shouldn't be that way, but some, some, some are broken, so you just got to get it. Uh, sort of that way. Anybody you work with that's going to create these should be able to help you make that uh, happen. So. Cool. There's uh, another question. Um, if we should, ah, I, I, I restructured the question. Should we be uh, a certified ACSA sender to register for AMP? Um, Everyone should be a able... CSA. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone. What a silly uh, question. Yeah. I like uh, that answer. Um, <laughs> no, you don't. If it's okay for you, no one needs to. Um, but it would be ideal to be a certified tender. Uh, so this is a service of, of of the partners that you've mentioned in the presentation, and it's free for everyone uh, to join that program, and it's really beneficial. Yep. Um, Good, let me quickly have a look there. Ah, Sebastian, how many of these is... are you having to translate? Pardon? <laughs> are, they, are the questions all being asked in, in English or are you having to translate some of these? Yes, yes, they are. I'm, I'm really thankful for uh, for the audience. <laughs> so they are all in English, that's all fine. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not having the hard job here. Um, a question here regards way to responses Oracle. Does responses and Oracle support AMP yet? Do you know that from hand? I can say not yet. Not uh, yet, yeah. And, and I don't know how much else they'll let me say about that. So just not yet. <laughs> okay. Another question, what kind of Skippify branding, if any, appears in your templates? Good question. Yeah. <laughs> really, really, really great question. We get that a lot. Um, so you'll notice in the, in the video that John played previously, there's a small call out that says view products. There's no Skippify branding there. You would, you would see in the checkout that there's a small check mark, check mark, which is our icon next to the buy with one touch or the checkout, and that's it. So, um, you know, we don't have a big Skipify logo that goes and sits on top of your creative. It's very subtle, but it's it's recognizable enough that a user can identify. Oh, hey, I I've used this before and I understand this, and it and it works, and and they can click on it. Another question coming up here. Maybe that is more the question for Riff here. Uh, what about Outlook? Um, will Microsoft support the new opportunities or should it be left behind? I mean, I'll take the AMP yeah. side of that. So yeah, Microsoft yep. had, had previously had a developer preview of, of AMP for email, which they recently paused. Um, 
I think it's entirely possible that they would pick that work up again in the future if the demand was there. Um, so if you send an AMP email to a Microsoft, uh, and th in this case, it was only uh, Outlook.com users before, um, not their uh, corporate exchange clients. But if you send an email to any Microsoft customer uh, that has an AMP part, it will just fall back to the HTML part. So just make sure you have a really solid HTML fallback. Yeah. I'll let Riff address how they handle that. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, Outlook's also doing some of this dynamic HTML, dynamic cards structure. And, um, you know, we're, we, would, we would have loved to see Apple adopt some AMP-based protocols, but they haven't. Um, so there's some dynamic CSS there that it's possible to use that Skipify also auto-generates through our, through our engine. But I'm actually hopeful that, you know, we'll see Apple start to adopt either AMP or maybe some of these dynamic HTML protocols. Either way, if you're a merchant, in order to send interactive, not dynamic, but interactive messages across all these different inboxes, you've got to do AMP and dynamic HTML and potentially some CSS. Skipify actually does all of those for you automatically if you're interested in it. You know, the, the, I would say the bulk of the value though, frankly, is in AMP in large part because of the real-time optimization. So that way, if, if a product goes out of stock or it's no longer available, it, it, that can be updated in, in real-time <clears throat> using AMP protocol. So, <laughs> you know, I think what, what we're seeing though that's really interesting is this evolution of interactivity inside of the inbox and, and some of these other email services are starting to choose you know Yahoo Mail and, and these other groups are also adopting AMP which is fantastic but I think what's happening is we've gone from you know I think less than 20 percent of consumers being able to receive interactive emails even just you know a year or two ago or uh, John knows the exact stats up to 50 percent 60 percent 80% and now as 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 Apple and some of these other groups adopt these real-time inventory based protocols you're very quickly going to see a hundred percent of of email users be able to have interactive real-time optimized emails and it's it's really going to be in the hands of merchants to say okay well how do we do this efficiently what are the tools that make this available inside of our workflows where it's not extra effort for the team and again, that's where Skipify can be really, really helpful. We can go in and build all that for you um, without any additional coding or effort on, on the merchant side. Right, thanks. Um, there is a question from Savannah. She's from an agency uh, focused on email marketing. Um, a simple question and maybe a hard to answer question. Ooh, How sure. do we gonna get started um, with offering that service to their clients and how much does this cost? Yeah, you want me to take that, John? I mean, I can or tell you on the, G, on the Gmail and AMP side, it costs you nothing. Um, and how you get started is either you work with somebody like Riff uh, or you go to the AMP playground and start poking around and just doing stuff. Um, yeah, but if you're gonna yeah. work with Riff, here's, here's the Riff part. <laughs> <laughs> work with Riff. Uh, work with Skipify. Um, we're actually free to get started. Um, so our business model is not to send emails or optimize creative. We're a payments company. So we take a percentage of the transaction when it's finished. So just like they would pay a, a PayPal or a credit card company or processor, they're paying Skipify a fee to facilitate that transaction. And so our, our business model is really around creating all these new tools and resources for merchants that make, for example, shoppable emails possible or, or very easy access to AMP to emails possible. And then on the back end, what we're doing is helping to facilitate that purchase. And that's where we make our money. We charge a, a very small fee on each transaction that happens through Skipify. And on the, the messages, the emails or text messages or whatever else that gets sent out through our tech, where transactions don't happen, we don't charge any money for that at all. It's completely those are all completely free. Um, and then the, the first part of that question, which is how do they get started? They can either email sales at skipify.com or they can go to skipify.com slash email. We do work with some agencies right now. We're, we're open to working with more. We can help you build some messaging. We have some content that you can share, some case studies, some examples that you can share with your own merchants, your own customers about what it looks like for them to get started with shopful emails. 
those are resources we're happy to, to provide for you so that you can have that conversation with, with your customers about starting to use interactive and shoppable emails. Cool, thanks for that. Uh, a great question from Benjamin here. Um, if you previously previously registered for AMP um, and it was improved, I guess by you, John, so by Google, do we need to register again for Yahoo Mail or Mail.ru? Uh, so maybe is the short answer. Um, the the Verizon Media team and responsible for Yahoo Mail is has access to the list of registra uh, approved registrations already, um, and since they're in an early phase of the developer preview, they're sort of going through them. Um, I, I don't know that they'll approve them all, or I don't exactly know the, the status there. So it, what I would say is, it doesn't hurt to re-register. I think we even added a form a uh, box on the f registration form that says that you're already registered with Gmail. You can check this box. Um, and that'll just get you to the top of the, the review queue, I think, for, for the Yahoo Mail and uh, Mail.ru bits. Right, thanks for that. Uh, a good question from a marketer's perspective. How can I track, uh, how can I track what the customer did um, with the mail? Where is the information stored? So I think it's regards how can I figure out what was chosen, what was clicked, the interaction That's... within the email. Yeah. It's there's some work there that, that needs to get done on the side of the, the marketer to be able to do that. Again, if you partner with Skipify, we'll do all that for you automatically so you don't have to build all that. Um, you'd have to build it for every template that you send out and every version of that template that you send out. So it's weird that you, I keep the easiest answer for me is just work with Skipify. <laughs> Go talk to that Skipify team and we'll help you with it. Um, yeah, John. Yeah. I mean, essentially, uh, whatever whatever works in HTML today, HTML emails today will work in AMP powered emails as well. Um, and you know, there's obviously anything that calls back to your servers or uh, whatever you would have a record of those kinds of things too. But um, we're less focused on how to better track users and more on how to give users better experiences. Cool. Thanks. Um, I think this will be the last or the pre-last question here. Um, I guess this is coming from a German participant. Are Skippy servers located in the US only? Question mark. I think that pretty much guides into the right direction of GDPR compliance and data privacy and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right now we're only US based, but we are in the in the early stages of doing some work internationally, please drop us a line and reach out. We'd love to include you in our international beta and, and work with you, you know, over the next couple of months as we launch that. Okay, I think then we're nearly at the top of the hour. I think, Mikey, you still have one or two charts. Um, thanks for answering all the questions. There have been a few more. Uh, we can share that with you after that session. So yeah, thanks. First of all, I want to say thanks to Wirt and uh, John that you're also taking part virtually with us and this is a digital email summit. That was pretty cool, your presentation. And um, dear attendees, I hope you enjoyed the session too. And um, as you can see, we have next webinars in the upcoming weeks. We hope to see and hear you soon. And uh, if you would like to attend, just register and um, yeah, we see you soon. That's it. Bye. Thank you, everybody.